So I finally went and saw the movie Afraid. And this was another, like, kind of dropped out of nowhere Blumhouse movie. They kind of promote these. They kind of don't. This is a PG-13 movie that, you know, most people want to go into to hate or don't even watch them and hate them just for existing. Uh, I try to give these movies fair shots and report back to you if these are worth your time or not. So this is about a marketing guy who um, is trying to, you know, wow this, this, uh, this team that is selling this new technology his his boss is like you got to land us this account and they like him but they're like you know in order for you to properly market this thing it needs to live in your house so that you have lived with it so you know how to market the thing which makes perfect sense so they send one to him and he gets aya aya is an ai very similar to alexa and you know goes into his house and it starts helping him out with all of his problems we actually just watched the new megan fox movie subservience uh last night so uh and tim this other ai movie like a week i don't know a couple weeks ago so a lot of ai horror coming and plenty more to come because this is the big new fear right because we are entering the the era of actual AI. Like, this is nothing new. We've been talking about this in movies forever, but we're actually here now. And so you're going to really start to see these movies ramp up. Now, this movie stars John Cho, as well as Catherine Waterston. It also has David Dostmalshian in it, which um, I think I knew he was in this, but I didn't know. I didn't know if he was like a voice or something, because I didn't see if him in the trailers. Not that I remember. I watched very little of the trailers of this. Um, but I was actually surprised to see he had a, a, a role in this. So uh, this is brought to us by Chris Weitz, who wrote Rogue One. But he also directed uh, Twilight New Moon. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so we're, I was actually really into this for the like first 45 minutes. Because I really did like. Because I really love John Cho. Um, I think he's phenomenal in the movie Searching, and I like him overall as an actor. So him and Catherine Waterston uh, as, as husband and wife, I really liked them as a couple and could watch them. And honestly, like, the horror element is, of course, where this film completely falls apart and uh, doesn't work for me at all, which is a shame because, like, this is that kind of movie, almost like the movie Her with Joaquin Phoenix, where I was really into the characters and the AI interaction with them and how it was affecting their life and making, you know, actually making improvements on their life and then making them actually, like, look at their life in a different way with the useful help of AI so that they have to kind of reflect on who they are now, that they have more free time and as a, as a couple and uh, as a family and everything. I thought that, that all that stuff was working fairly well. Um, the kids in this are, they're fine. They're okay. Um, but it's, it's really when we, we get to the horror stuff that that stuff is all terrible. I think all of the horror in this doesn't work at all. Um, and then once we get to the third act, I actually was pretty surprised by how genuinely like disjointed and pretty awful. I thought the third act was and i'm i'm honestly pretty surprised to see that this has a 5.1 on imdb um because i would think that because it's a blumhouse film that people already want to hate and usually don't give fair shakes to it has to be actually pretty decent pretty good to get an okay rating because it's already kind of you know um dealing with a lot of animosity towards it to you know, out the gate from being a Blumhouse film, I would expect this movie to be in like the threes um, with how bad that third act is. It feels, there's so many questions. Even a buddy of mine who was like, oh, this is okay, shout out to Wyatt. He was like, oh, you know, it's not terrible. It's not good. It's just kind of like meh. And I was like, I don't know, man. Like I can understand that from a balancing perspective of like, I actually was really pretty into the first half of the movie and then the la the last third of the film I was like what is happening like 
I had so many questions. And he was like, well, he was kind of laughing a little bit. And I asked him probably like 15 questions that I just kind of posted all together. And maybe he had better things to do than to try to answer me. But uh, I posted a couple of them first. And he was like, yeah, I don't know. And then he was like, you know, but I didn't care. And then, you know, I, I then hit him with like a bunch of other questions and he never wrote back. So I don't know if he was just too busy or whatever, but I have so many questions of like how this worked, how that, why did this happen? Why did we do this? Where did this come from? Who are the hell are these people? Like there's people that are stocking them in like a RV that are human and you're like, huh? Like what's happening? And then when it's revealed what's happening, then you have so many questions because there's like a resolution to that that happens at the end. And you're like, where did that come from? Like where I can't say, because I don't want to, I don't want to give that away if you do watch it. But I'm, I was like, wait, how did that work? And why are these people? And then as far as like the Aya being in the house and then what it all ends up being in the end, I'm like, I don't even understand why it needed to be in their house in the first place like what is happening here like why is the connection to the family and and for the like the grand scheme of things when it ends you're like i don't understand its connection here like in megan i'm never lost on what like the escalation of megan like where she starts and where she concludes because of her programming, because of the things that she learns along the way and where we end up, all of those things track. All of those things escalate and make sense to where we end. That's why Megan is a good movie and people liked it. As to where with this one, things don't track. When you're breaking down the logic of asking questions here and here and here, now you don't want to overthink a movie like this. I try not to. But when it's this egregious, when, when, when things are this disjointed, when things are this broken, you have to wonder how much studio interference happened with the film like this, where they're filming it. Because there's certain like elements to the family dynamic that are happening at the end that are set up kind of earlier in the film, but they feel so hollow and vapid. And I can't imagine John Cho and Catherine Watterson like, agreeing to a script like this. It feels like in-house fuckery where you're sitting back and going okay like somewhere along the way they were having disputes over the script and the direction of things and they just kind of tried to throw in a bunch of like little mini subplots or conclusions that weren't really set up well enough to have that kind of ending so it was it was kind of an interesting experience. And I know some people said this felt like it was written by AI. At first, I didn't think so, because I actually thought some of the writing in the in the opening was good. And I liked the way that Aya was helping them in their life and the dialogue between the, you know, the family. I actually was like, oh, OK, this is OK. This is going to be one of those movies that I get out of. And I'm like, it's fine. It's it was good. It was watchable. You know, we just had that with Tarot. Uh, which I was a defender of. And I was like, it's a totally fine, fun PG-13, one or two watch with the family, spook, like a classic spook tale kind of thing that a lot of people shit on, but I'm a fan of. I think they're fine. I think, you know, they don't have to be super deep. They don't have to be super graphic. They don't have to be any of those things. They can just be entertaining. As to where with this one, things are so disjointed. Things are so fucking confusing. And... It, it feels broken. It feels misleading. It feels like when you're you're at the end. It's one of those movies. It's kind of like when I watched The Bloodline Killer. The Bloodline Killer is worse. Because that movie's terrible from beginning to end. But it's one of those kinds of movies where I actually... It, it feels like gaslighting to a point. Because it's like you actually walk out of the movie like... Was I paying attention? Because I have so many questions that I can't believe that a major studio released a movie this, like, confusing. That there's this many unanswered questions in the final product. For a film that should be super simple. Like, Blumhouse films are not meant to be artistic. This isn't an A24 film. It's not, an, it's not a neon film. It's not supposed to be deep. Right, It's supposed to be very surface level, mostly for entertainment, some quippy lines, some cool memorable moments, a couple jump scares. That's all these movies are meant to be. They're popcorn films. 
They're simple. So why in the end am I asking so many questions that I don't feel like they have answers? I have to then look at myself and say, was I paying attention? I was in a theater. I don't, I don't get on my phone and I don't look around. I'm focusing on the screen the whole time. So yeah, pretty sure I was. And I asked my buddy and he couldn't answer any of the questions because I don't think there is an answer to these questions. I just don't know how you release a movie like that in a major release from a major studio where there's so many unanswered plot holes that are like offensively bad. Anyways, that's that. Uh, just such a shame because you have such good talent on display here with John Cho and everybody that I'd mentioned. Um, I felt the dynamic was good. Like there was good things going for it, but then it just becomes such a chaotic mess. Anyway, ugh, afraid. Um, it, re it had... Uh, had a different title at one point, but uh, I, I forget what it was called. Uh, I think it was just Aya, maybe. I don't know, but not good. <laughs> Definitely don't watch it. All right. Adios. Bye.